Hey, hey, good people. Arthur Morris here. Hope all is well. In this video, we're going to look at the limits at infinity. So as you can see from the graph that we have here, uh, we have f of x, the function f of x equals 3x squared over x squared plus 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote. So the limit as x approaches uh, and the limit of the function x as x approaches 3 as uh, is 3 as x approaches infinity so uh, the farther we go out on this x-axis this thing is closer and closer and closer to 3 as x approaches negative infinity we see that this uh, still approaches uh, the function as f of x is 3 so so we're, in this uh, video, we're going to deal with horizontal asymptotes, basically. And you may remember some of your rules from horizontal asymptotes, but if not, we'll go over them still. So if R is a positive rational number and C is any real number, then the limit of C over X to the R power as X approaches infinity is equal to zero. Uh, furthermore, if X, sub, X to the power of R is defined when x is less than zero, then the limit of a constant, and this c is a constant, some real number, over x to some r, r power as x approaches negative infinity is zero. So keep these two things in mind. For example, uh, the limit as x approaches net or infinity of, let's see here, let's say three over x squared is zero that's what that means same thing as it approaches negative infinity so keep that in mind we may uh, use that here in this lesson all right so make sure you write those down uh, I recommend that you pause the video right here and write down this theorem and the guidelines down here for finding limits at positive and negative infinity of rational functions All right, so if the degree of the numerator is less than the, the degree of the denominator, then the limit of the rational function is zero. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the limit of the rational function is the ratio of the leading coefficients. And if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denom denominator, then the limit of the rational function does not exist. That means it's approaching either positive or negative infinity. Okay, so you may remember, and this, of course, this is very similar. Basically the same thing as horizontal asymptotes. All right, so if we have this function here, then what we're saying is that if n, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then we found our horizontal asymptote uh, to be y equal a to the nth power, a sub n over b sub n, the leading coefficients, the ratio of the leading coefficients, and that is the limit as well. If n is less than m, degree of the uh, numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then we know our horizontal asymptote uh, is at zero, and that's the limit as well. And if n is greater than m, then the horizontal asymptote, um, we have a horizontal asymptote and the limit approaches positive or negative infinity. All right, so that's what we have there. So we're going to use this logic here. So for uh, number 15, we want to find the limit if possible. Uh, so I have my numerator and my denominator in descending variable order. So my numerator, my degree is two. For my denominator, my degree is three. So that means that my degree in my numerator is greater than my the degree in my uh, it's less than sorry less than the degree in my denominator therefore from our rules up here my limit 
equals zero. All right, for B, the degrees are the same. N equals M. If the uh, degrees are equal to each other, then your limit, just like your horizontal asymptote, would be uh, the ratio of the leading coefficients. In this case, it's one over one. So just like finding your horizontal asymptote, uh, your limit is the same thing. So y is equal to one over one. Therefore, my limit equals one. Limit of that function equals one as x approaches infinity. All right, part C, the limit of x squared plus two over x minus one as x approaches infinity. We see that n is greater than m. So we know that this thing either approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. Uh, if we look here, since we're, it says x as x approaches positive infinity, we know we are using positive numbers. So you have to think about this. If I'm looking at my expressions here, my leading coefficients, both of those are positive. If I'm plugging in positive numbers, these are going to continue to get larger and larger and larger and stay positive. Therefore, my limit, although it does not exist, if it asks, does it approach positive infinity or negative infinity, it, approach po it approaches positive infinity. So the limit does not exist, but it goes towards positive infinity. All right, number 17. You may want to rewrite that. So negative 2x to the 3 halves plus 5 over 3x squared minus 4. All right, so we see that the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in our denominator. And when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of our denominator, our horizontal asymptote is at 0, y equals 0. Uh, therefore, the limit equals 0. All right, here on the second one, we have um, three halves and three halves, so the limits are equal to each other, or the degrees are equal to each other, n equals m, and when the degrees are equal to each other, then we uh, know that the limit, just like the horizontal asymptote, is the ratio of the leading coefficients. Uh, we didn't flip it around here, but if you look above, you see that the leading coefficients are negative two and three. So the limit equals negative 2 over 3. And that would also be the horizontal asymptote. Alrighty, and C, part C here, we have uh, n is greater than m. So we know that, um, that this thing is either approaching positive infinity or negative infinity. So as x approaches, we know the limit does uh, the limit does not exist, but we can tell whether it's going towards positive infinity or negative infinity. So it says as x approaches positive infinity, that means we're using positive numbers to substitute in for x. If you look at your leading coefficient, so if we go back up here to the top here and we look at our leading coefficients, we have a negative over a positive. So if we're plugging positive numbers in uh, for these x's then we will continue to have a negative over a positive and a negative divided by a positive is negative. Therefore, although the limit does not exist, if it asks us, does it approach negative infinity or positive infinity? We know that it approaches negative infinity because if we substituted positive numbers in for X, we will continue to get a negative over positive and negative divided by positive is negative. All right. All right, what about number 20 here? Uh, now, you can also look at these as separate terms, the limit of each one of these, which is what I'm going to do here since this is not in one fraction. So the limit, and we looked at this earlier, I told you to make sure you uh, wrote this down. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of a constant over a uh, variable raised to a positive exponent is equal to zero. 
so that goes to zero so the only thing that we're looking at now is the limit of negative x over 3 as x approaches positive infinity all right so we know that the degree in our numerator is greater than the degree in our num denominator so we know the limit does not exist but let's determine what does this go towards negative infinity or positive infinity well the numerator is negative however x is approaching negative infinity so i'm substituting or re replacing x with negative numbers as we go continue to go towards negative infinity and we know that if i'm re replacing x with negative numbers and i have a negative there then negative divided by negative is positive that means it's going to continue to get larger and larger larger go towards the positive and going towards positive infinity Alrighty, let's look at a couple more some that involves some uh, square roots so this we have the limit of x over the square root of x squared minus x as x approaches negative infinity okay so, um, and one other method that we could have used back there is what we call, and we will use it here, is to divide by the big X. So we look here and we find the X with the largest exponent, and we're going to divide every term by that uh, term. So the, the term with the largest exponent here is X squared. So I'm going to divide everything I see here by X squared. Uh, in my numerator, I want to keep in mind that uh, well, first of all, in my denominator, we see that this x squared is under the radical. So really, I'm dividing by the square root of x squared. So in my numerator, the square root of x squared is positive or negative x. And uh, to determine what I'll use, either positive or negative, I'll look and see what the limit uh, of x is approaching. So, all right, so let's get started here. So we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity. We're going to divide by the big x which is the square root of x squared. In my numerator, if I divide by the square root of x squared, I'm either dividing by positive x or negative x. So in this case, x is approaching negative infinity, so I'm going to divide by negative x. Okay. All right, now let's start simplifying. All right, so we have uh, x divided by negative x is negative one. X, the square root of x squared divided by x squared is one. And uh, we get one over x when we simplify x over x squared, okay? Now, what I know is that I can take the limit of each part here, so I can also uh, take the limit of one over x as x approaches negative infinity. So to, when I do that, I know that the limit of a number over a variable with a positive exponent as x approaches positive or negative infinity is simply zero. So that goes to zero. All right, so now I have the limit of x uh, of negative one over the square root of one, and we know the square root of one is one. So as x approaches negative infinity, So the limit as x approaches negative infinity, we get uh, negative one is just going to equal that constant, negative one. So when you have that radical, and you could have done that with the problems above, you can divide by the big X and simplify and take the limit of each part like that. but it's very helpful when you have these radicals dividing by the big X. All right, so let's go back up here and look at number 29. We have the limit of 2X plus 1 over the square root of X squared minus X as X approaches negative infinity. So again, we want to divide by the big X. And the big X, the X with the largest exponent is the, it's the X squared that's under the radical. Uh, so let's see here. So limit as x approaches negative infinity. 
dividing by the big X. And in this case, we see again that the exponent X is approaching negative infinity, knowing that the square root of X squared is positive for negative X. Since X is approaching negative infinity, we're going to use negative X in the numerator. So limit as X approaches negative infinity, we're going 2x divided by negative x plus 1 divided by negative x all over let's see the square root of x squared divided by uh, x squared and minus x divided by x squared All right, so we know that this plus minus here plus a negative, uh, we know that the, we can just say minus one over x. All right, so if I take um, start simplifying here, I have negative two minus one over x, the square root of one minus one over x. And any time I'm using the uh, finding the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, then when I see one over x or a number over x, then I know that the limit of that is zero. So now I have negative two over one because those went to zero, and the square root of one is one. So my limit is equal to negative 2. As x approaches negative infinity. Alrighty, good people, make sure you read this section in the textbook. I hope you found this video to be helpful with the example problems, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.